first and only time I will relinquish my saber. Because it's mine! This is for anyone out there that is feeling pain. I understand that pain. In spite of it all, in spite of my shortcomings, in spite of all the things that I've done, that's <sighs> still my mother. And I loved her. I knew that I didn't have a choice. I had to go and I had to make my father choose. He chose wrong, and I did what I did, and I feel that pain, but that was, she was not that. That was my mother. I could never do that. And out of respect for her, I do this. Princess Leia, Morgana, mother, wife, legend, this review is for you. You too. This is Kylo Ren representing JVS. This is the spoiler review for. If you want to go into dynamics of Rogue One, Everything about it was nostalgia. Do note, and you should know, that this is spoiler filled. So if you've not seen the film, go and see it. It's highly recommended. If you do not know anything about the Star Wars Catalyst book, I recommend you check that as well. Then, after watching this film, go and watch A New Hope, because everything about this movie speaks volumes for Nostalgia. Here we go. The movie itself, it picks up from the person by the name of Jen Orso. Jen Orso and Galen Orso, her father and a daughter, they're going out and doing the thing with their mother. All of a sudden, the father knows that she must hide. You don't know why. You come to find out that there is a lot that is really going on. And so the story picks up from that point. And after that point, it just platforms itself into pure amazingness. The, the standouts for me, as far as this film, would definitely be Ben Menderson as Krennic, uh, Donnie Yen as Chirrut, and definitely Alan Turek as K2SO. K2SO is a character that, out of all the droids, BB-8, out of all the different other droids that you've seen, he is insulting. The first moment he meets Jen Orso, he takes her and slams her down with his... Yeah, sorry, sorry. He takes her and slams her down with his pen, and then he makes a mockery of her and says, we were trying to save you. Stop resisting that. And then from that point on, there's a connection between her, him, and then all the other characters from this revolution from this rebellion that they were trying to cause. And it, it, it does so many different things in the way of paving the way for A New Hope. If you don't know A New Hope, New Hope is platformed off of Princess Leia going and sending a message to um, Obi-Wan Kenobi through the droid C-3PO. C-3PO had the plans of, you know, the, 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 the plans and the blueprints for the Death Star. And so everything within what was going on was platformed off of that, just that one sentence. But what you don't understand is what these people suffered through. You don't understand that, you know what I'm saying, her dad, Galen, or so decided to stay with the Imperial fleet after his wife died, after he didn't know if his daughter was gonna live anymore, and decided to stay within the ranks of There was an amazing conversation that happens with Jen Orso, when she finally meets her dad with him, and she, she sees the, the hologram with Saul Gilson. Saul was a great character, by the way, with Forrest Whitaker. He was just very convoluted and very mixed up. I thought that they could have pulled a lot more with him when they actually had the guy from The Night Of, and he was torturing him and making that creature go and platform into his brain, 
and then you kind of find out that he's worried that Jen is trying to betray him as well, you can tell he's really disjointed. But that conversation that, that they had after that, she goes and decides to see the hologram of her dad. And then after that hologram happens, that is when the emotion happened. That was when Lucy Jones just shines and you get to find out that um, Maz Mikkelsen's character decides to be with the Imperials just because of the fact that he wanted to implant, you know, a, a, a plan to be able to ruin the, the, the Death Star uh, in the long term. And then on top of that, you've got the actual Rebels. Everything about this film, if you don't know, uh, Star Wars Rebels, the ghost shows up, um, shoot, Chomp shows up, uh, different characters from the past, they all show up. And for me, I thought it was just amazing. I thought that everything that they did in terms of making this about the characters and driving the force through characters such as Truett and his, his comrade and what they were trying to do, I thought it was masterful because you get an understanding that the planet that they were on was housed for, you know, Jedi Temple or maybe other Jedi. But then even more than that, which I've been waiting to spoil about this, is the greatest and the most evil Darth Vader. He was on the Mustafa system. The Mustafa system is where he lost everything. It's either one, he decided to make that his home, and he wanted to relive all his pain so he could use that as a tool to make himself stronger. But well, first time we see him is in one of the hibernation chambers that um, Luke Skywalker was in. And on top of that, like, why be there, you know? And his character um, with Matt Mickelson, their interaction, I thought it was great, force choke. Um, but the highlight for everyone is when Darth Vader just goes amok at the end of the film when he just goes and lays to waste all the different characters and the devotion they had to try to get the plans there. Oh my gosh, that was amazing eye candy. And James Earl Jones voices it perfectly. The thing that I'll say about this film though is that this is not a happy tale. Every single one of uh, the Rogue One crew died. Every single one of them. And they die in a way that you know, it, it is, it's sometimes, it was, I think for the pilot, I didn't think he had to die like that. He got a grenade up in the joint, he could have threw it back. That's a whole other thing. Um, Chewie should have died walking out, you know, blind and not getting shot and then doing what he needed to do. But I think the thing about it, it wasn't so much the coincidental, you know, things of them dying, it's that to what end? Like they knew um, how pivotal it was to get these things there. And I think that was the thing about it for me is that from an onlooker, I think that they did a great job. I think that everything that they did in terms of building suspense and allowing you to flush out these characters, they did it very well. I think that characters such as, um, what is the character's name? Uh, Cashin. Um, I think that his character was basically like a scoundrel because I mean, one of the most heinous things he does is he, you know what I'm saying, he was inter intersecting this one guy trying to get information, he just kills him. And then like when him and Jim were fighting, like he decided to kill one of the people they were working with just so they could get out of the way. And you could tell he's not a good guy. And then they had that conversation later on, that all the scoundrels, all the rogues, they get together and they're like, well, we want to do something more, you know? And it's like, if we have to give our lives, then we'll do it. And I mean, for me, I think that pulling apart the different pieces about that, was amazing, but the Easter eggs are the, the the most ultimate reason why I'm here, reason why I'm in this. Um, because they took, oh my gosh, they took um, Tarkin. The guy that played Tarkin, was, he died in 1994, and they put him back on stage. They put him on the stage. They put C-3PO, R2-D2, back on stage, even though the character of C-3PO, he died this year. And then the most amazing, most pivotal thing about all of this, and I gotta take my gloves off for this, is that my mother, Carrie Fisher, Princess Leia, she was the one that, you know, Organa had came through, he was talking to um, Mom Martha about the fact that he knew somebody that he could trust. He knew that he could interact with 
uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi, and he could be of the help. And then he trusted somebody he had known and been taken care of, which is the other twin. If you looked at episode three, you would know that. And then he was like, you will, you know, she will take care of me. I trust her with my life. And then sure enough, at the end, it was Princess Leia, and it was amazing. If any of y'all have not seen the film, and you're just trying to do this, like you, for that moment alone, you might cry, especially it's in the sense of what had happened now to uh, the late Carrie Fisher. And I mean, for me, I thought the movie was just brilliant. It was, it spoke volumes of nostalgia. It made an extension to A New Hope, and then everything about it was just beautiful. And for that, Darkness, no more. May the force be with you. Man, it was all worth it, you guys. Uh, special shout out to the YouTube family. Uh, special shout out to the Fisher family. Uh, special shout out to George Lucas. Shout out to um, you know what I'm saying? Everybody that has been a part of um, Star Wars in general, you know what I'm saying? Like, y'all are inspirations in so many different ways. Most of my memorabilia that I have around here is all Star Wars related in some capacity. So, I mean, for me, this, this was something that I felt that I had to do and I, I really wanted to, you know, try to do it the best of my ability. I know it wasn't as detailed as I normally have it. Um, but if you look around my area, like everything around here is Star Wars related. And so for me, Carrie Fisher um, was more than just an actress. Like she represented so much that, you know, brought to life this world that has added immersion and joy, you know what I'm saying, to my life and inspired me to not only be an artist, but to strive to be a great one and you know, dare to believe what things could happen. And the reason why I'm kind of naked right now, because all oh, this joint, this joint was hot. <laughs> so this is kind of, I guess, my blooper reel. Um, but I, I definitely wanted to um, acknowledge that. And I mean, it's sad to see her go. Um, it's very sad. Uh, it's gonna be rough, but you know what I'm saying? God is still good and um, her light is still shining and her presence will be made known and come next year you'll be able to see her once again in, in film, in her last film ever. So go check out Rogue One if you haven't checked it out yet. Keep it locked. JVS Wing us out. Woo! Peace y'all. Oh, Jesus. Woo! It was all worth it though.